What's going on, everybody? I'm Jory Goodman, the Time Teller. So, guys, today's episode is is going to be a very different tone than the normal content we produce here. Usually, we're very lighthearted; we don't take anything too seriously. But today, it's actually very, very serious. Okay, a couple years ago, uh, I made an episode kind of writing off and making fun of a product that was very heavily marketed on the social media uh, watch worlds, and it was this like anti theft device. It was like a clasp lock. Uh, that would like keep the watch on your wrist in case of like a, a, a armed robbery or something. Now, I had a few issues with this product, okay? Number one, if someone has a good grip on your wrist watch and, and tries to tear it off of your wrist, the clasp is not the area that is going to be like compromised, right? The clasp has a bunch, typically, especially if we're talking about Rolexes, has like multiple retention systems uh, the watch is probably going to fail over by the spring bar. So if someone has a really good grip on your wristwatch and yanks it off, it's probably going to be pretty uncomfortable on your wrist. It's probably going to hurt. Um, but they're probably going to shear the spring bars off the end link and they're going to be left with the head of the watch and like a dangling bracelet. So th the clasp lock was just a silly invention. I feel it was like a solution for a problem that didn't exist. And then... On top of that, in that episode, I made the very bold statement. I said, if you live in an area that these types of robberies happen with such consistency that you need an anti-theft device like this, just leave that area. You need to move. Like, where is this happening? Well, guess what? In 2021, it's happening like all the time here in Los Angeles. Let's talk about this. It is 12, 11 p.m. Let's get down to business. Okay, so here's a news report from November 27th, 2021. Black Friday, another high-end store is robbed in a string of six LA smash and grabs. This is like the new thing. Remember in the golden age of YouTube, uh, there would be the flash mobs, right? There would be like a couple uh, having like a cup of coffee in a bistro uh, in like a city center. And then they're just sitting there, sipping on their little cup. And then all of a sudden, someone next to them will start... Snapping their fingers, and then the one of one of the people's like, hmm? oh, interesting. When someone else on the other side of them starts in perfect, in sync coordination, snapping their fingers, and so then they're like, how curious. And then before they knew it, just spreads and spreads and spreads, and then the whole city center is singing all the same songs and doing everything in perfect sync. And then the couple's just like, oh my God, I'm, this is beautiful. What is going on? Humanity is amazing. And then the man's like, humanity is amazing, but not as amazing as you. Will you marry me? You win. And scene. Beautiful. Loved that era of YouTube. Well, this was among the latest in a series of so-called flash mob style robberies in Los Angeles during the Thanksgiving holiday weekend. Okay, so instead of flash mobs, we have flash robs. What does this have to do with the watch world? Well, we're going to get into it. All right, check this out. Uh, this is from three weeks ago. Moment armed robbers calmly walk up to diners and steal couples watches at gunpoint. Been to this place many times. Super chill. The person that was editing uh, this clip wanted to put. Okay, check this out. This is the moment when an armed robber casually steps into a restaurant in California, uh, struck a gun, stole a woman's watch. The stunning footage is from Hot Wings Cafe on Melrose Ave. Remember Melrose Ave, okay? This is, this is like a common theme in today's episode. As a pair of masked men descends over them, shows a young couple pushing into a meal at a small table. One of the men swung his pistol and plunged it into the table. The other man uh, turned behind the couple and leaned against the shoulders of the male victim, appearing to whisper something in his ear. He immediately took off his watch, handed it to the armed man, then followed the female companions. Robbery lasted 10 seconds and was completely calm. Oh my god, I'm sure. Completely calm. I'm sure that it wasn't like a terrifying horrifying, trauma-inducing situation for the couple. It was just, to just totally calm, guys. According to LAPD, the incident on October 16th uh, came to light in the wake of last week's looting of Black Friday, which robbed businesses and individuals across the state. Uh, we can see here this couple just chill, eating. Two hooded men show up. He's got the piece in his hand. 
Uh, the dude seems to be still holding on to his food. Just, I guess he was kind of chill. Uh, hands over the product. And, um, yeah, must be terrifying. Super brazen, too, because you can see there's, like, over here, a bunch of people eating. Here's the kitchen. And then from this angle, you can see, like, a full party eating. And this is, like, the waitress or something. So this is happening, like, in front of people. All right? Th th like, they give zero <laughs> nowadays. Check this out. December 5th, 2021. Neighborhood Watch Group taking action to fight spike in crime in Melrose District. This seems to be happening all over Melrose. Fed up and frustrated with the recent spike in violent robberies and follow home attacks in Southern California. Uh, communities now taking matters into their own hands. So, um, follow home robberies. What does that mean? Well, these robbers are literally like staking people out if you're out and about doing your shopping going to a restaurant they will follow you home wait until you get to the threshold of your home sticking you up and cleaning house it is insane that this is happening nowadays here um we can see sidewalk diners robbed at gunpoint on melrose okay again melrose Ave in terrifying incident con video now i know what you're thinking oh this is just new coverage on the same incident we just spoke about right no totally different restaurant totally different uh victims might be the same perpetrators, I don't know. I don't think they caught these guys. Okay, we can see here, these dudes are freaking out, obviously. Um, putting guns straight to their face. Uh, this is infuriating. That's like broad daylight, guys. This is like broad daylight. But okay, so far I'm just showing you like a couple instances of what's going on in Melrose. This, this can't be like that consistent. Well, let's take a look. Armed robbers targeting people wearing Rolexes in Melrose area. Okay, so we can see this guy gets tackled. These dudes jump out of a car, tackle him again. Uh, tearing the watch off of his wrist. He's putting up a good fight, and thankfully he wasn't, um, like, terribly, terribly injured. He left with his life. Um, armed robbers have been targeting people wearing Rolexes and other expensive jewelry in the Melrose area, police say. So, okay. I keep bringing up Melrose, Melrose, Melrose. For, for those of you who don't know Los Angeles, Melrose is a very hip shopping area. It uh, crosses over into Fairfax. Fairfax is where you find like Supreme and Rip and Dip and all these like kind of urban fashion uh, designers. So like you will often, any day of the week, see lines and lines down the block of these very hip kids and TikTokers uh, waiting to get the newest drop, the newest release uh, from these designers. And Melrose just feeds into that. There's a bunch of restaurants off of Melrose, a bunch of cafes, a bunch of shopping. Uh, there are thrift, famous thrift stores off of Melrose, but it's not like thrift stores where you would go and, and you get something cool for a deal. Uh, no, you'll find like a an old Harley Davidson shirt that looks like it's been dragged down the concrete with holes the size of basketballs in it. Uh, and these Melrose stores will be like, oh, it's distressed. $400. So you're not going to get a deal on Melrose, but you might get robbed. But okay, you can argue Melrose, Fairfax District, still part of the big city. What if I'm just going to hang out in the nice parts of town? I'm going to go to Beverly Hills, okay? The nice BH. Going to hang out uh, on Rodeo. Going to check out the Vacheron Boutique, IWC. Grand Seiko has a boutique there, right? We'll be good to go. Well, not exactly. Arrests after $500,000 watch stolen at Beverly Hills Restaurant. Authorities say three men were arrested in the armed robbery of a man's $500,000 watch while he was dining outdoors in Beverly Hills. The suspects wore hoods. One of them put a gun to the head of the watch's owner as he sat at El Pastillo restaurant on March 4th, according to police. A woman was shot in the leg during the struggle over the watch and gun. She was not seriously hurt. Okay, so El Pastillo. I've been here. Uh, you eat, like, right off, the, right off the street, off the sidewalk. Very, very nice area. You're right there. Okay, you are literally right in the thick of things in Beverly Hills. All the fashion boutiques there. All the nice cars. Fancy schmancy. Some dude, all right, uh, I'm not going to use his name, but he's, a, a, to my knowledge, he's another watch dealer here in Los Angeles, was eating wearing a $500,000 Richard meal. okay? Now, these criminals that are willing to do something this brazen, they don't have, like, the wristwatch annual. They don't have, like, a jeweler's loop. They're not here checking out the Rio of a watch to make sure that the Rolex engravings are there. They're not taking off the, the watch's bracelet to make sure that the serial number is engraved in between the lugs. I've had people in my comment section telling me that 
they validate wearing a fake watch because they don't want to have to deal with potential dangers of it being stolen or this or that. Th this is what I'm trying to get at, okay? These armed robbers that are willing to do this, they don't care if it's fake or real. They don't know or care about the reference number. If it looks shiny, if it looks nice and expensive, they're going to steal it and then they'll figure it out after, okay? They're not there with their reference number booklet. They're not there combing over the dial variants, making sure it's not a service dial and a service handset. They don't care about that. So if you're wearing a fake Rolex, if it looks like a Rolex, they'll steal it. If you're wearing a fake Richard Meal, if you're wearing uh, anything, an Invicta, Pro Diver, or something gaudy that looks expensive and shiny, these, these people will steal it from you simply because it looks expensive and shiny. They don't care about the authenticity. But why do I bring this up? Well, do I think they targeted this man because he had a $500,000 Richard Meal? I think they targeted this man because he was wearing something that looked like a Richard Meal, and Drake has made songs referencing Richard Meal. Uh, the Migos talk about it. Uh, you know, OBJ made headlines talking ab about his Richard Meal watch. Um, this is pop culture now. Okay, these mainstream items are part of culture. So these people don't have to be orologists to know that it's expensive and sought after. And that's all it takes for some of these people. They're just going to steal it from you because it's expensive. February 16th, 2021. Police search for Rolex robbers caught in video in Fairfax District. Robbers have taken seven Rolex watches in a period of about two weeks. This is insane. This is insanity and you know the worst part the worst part comes from the article we're going to cover right now which is that if you get your expensive watch stolen from you there's no guarantee you'll ever be able to recoup that item all right robbery victim struggles to reclaim a stolen watch after a thief dies in fall during escape hey man play stupid games win stupid prizes i don't have any sympathy for the thief a pawn shop in Los Angeles had asked for thousands of dollars before it would return a stolen Rolex that was treasured by its owner. The more you read into the story, the more infuriating it becomes. Here's this older gentleman. You unfortunately, okay, so he has a day date here. Cash for gold, I guess that's, that's, or I'm not sure what, which pawn shop it is, but, um, he's Korean immigrants. All right come to Los Angeles. I may be mistaken. I may be mistaken, excuse me, but I believe Los Angeles has the largest Korean uh population outside of Korea. I don't I don't know if that if if I'm factual about that, but we do have a very vibrant uh Korean population here in Los Angeles. You want some good food, uh you want a night out, you go to Koreatown, have some amazing Korean barbecue and hang out with your friends. Just great people, great culture. Love that food. Um and I love Koreatown. So this uh, older gentleman retired and the 24 karat gold watch was a 75th birthday present from Hassan and Myungja Oh's three adult children who said it represented their father's remarkable achievement of his own American dream and was a symbol of his accomplishments as he retired. Guys, I know a lot of people, whenever you mention Rolex, people want to respond with marketing, just a name, only paying for the name. And the truth is, you can, you can say that, you can call it what you will. The truth is, these expensive items transcend the reference number, transcend the movement that is inside. These mean things to people. This man's adult children wanted to show their gratitude for their father coming in and making them a life in America, celebrating his American dream, his accomplishments. They bought him... A, a Rolex president, and th that's a beautiful thing. That is truly a beautiful thing. And you read down here, we were thinking it was going to be the start of our family heirloom. It's beautiful and depressing when you find out what happened. So he had this watch stolen from him as he was wearing it. And then, uh, to add insult to injury, the watch had been held at a Los Angeles pawn shop that loaned the thief more than $16,000 and had demanded that the robbery victims pay the store that amount to get their stolen property back. So not only 
Did you go through a very traumatic, painful experience of having your watch stolen off of your wrist? When you finally get the news that they've located the watch at a pawn shop, the pawn shop is going to hold it over your head and extort you. Like, like, like it's th that is extortion. Lawyer up. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not giving legal advice. My one piece of advice, just as a human, is you should probably throw the book at these people and lawyer up. Pawn shops are so sleazy. The fact that they are literally in possession of stolen goods and they're going to charge the victims to, to give it up. No, dude. Sorry, you didn't do your due diligence as the person running the pawn shop. You bought stolen goods, which... I'm pretty sure there's laws where you have to put like fingerprints down and your ID whenever you go to hawk something at a pawn shop. Like you didn't do your due diligence. You accepted stolen material. You gave out $16,000. Sorry, dude. I'm assuming that you have insurance, your, your pawn shop. You lost that money. Chalk it up as a loss. You have to give these people their item back. This, this is infuriating. So I know I've been rallying, rallying, excuse me, or railing against Los Angeles pretty hard, but it's not exclusively happening in Los Angeles. A bunch of you guys sent me this article, December 11th, 2021. Watches worth $2 million taken in downtown smash and grab as retail raiders strike again and again. This is insanity, okay? This story was supposed to be about how shoplifting raiders stole thousands of dollars in merchandise from the North Face store on Michigan Avenue two days ago. Not anymore. Oh, so they were gonna have a story about how thousands of dollars of merchandise were stolen from a different store. But now they want to talk about how Chicago police are investigating a smash and grab team that stole an estimated $2 million worth of wristwatches from a luxury car dealership. Okay, this was at least six thieves. Okay, so an hour after, or excuse me, an hour earlier, these same people uh, stole $20,000 worth of coats from a different shop. <laughs> oh my God. So here, shortly after noon, Saturday, two men entered the Bentley Lamborghini Rolls Royce dealership uh, with a hammer. They broke a display case filled with Richard Meal watches, and they took about $2 million worth. <sighs> after they stole like $20,000 worth from a different retailer, and after they, they uh, hit up North Face. It's a pretty good day of shopping, if you ask me. So what's the takeaway here? Well, I guess the first uh, takeaway is to get out of Los Angeles. Noted. Uh, that's my plan. Uh, second takeaway is if you are in a nice area, just because you're in Beverly Hills, you're on the west side, hey, good to go. Uh, no, you're not good to go. Just because you're in a public area um, doesn't necessarily mean you're good to go. These robbers are becoming more brazen, more brazen every day. Um, I guess, what are we up? And the fourth takeaway would be that even if you do get out with your life and you're not terribly injured, you just had your stuff stolen, um, you might not be able to recoup it even if you know who has it because the pawn shops are scumbags and they're not, they're not going to help you out. And um, yeah, just be vigilant, be aware of your surroundings, make your best judgments possible and be prepared. There's a lot that I would like to go into that YouTube would not ever let me g talk about here, but just be prepared and, and um, read between the lines here, guys. Just be prepared and be prepared to defend yourself. So guys, let me know what you think about this. Again, thank you to all my viewers who sent me these various articles uh, in uh, my inbox. I really do appreciate it. You helped me produce this content, and for that, I am forever thankful. But just be safe. I hope that I, I seriously pray that none of this ever happens to any of you guys, but it does happen. And um, it's very unfortunate and very frustrating because it seems like this just keeps happening. Hope you have a safe and blessed holiday season. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. And uh, again, stay safe, guys. All right, guys. Stay happy. Stay healthy. Stay blessed. Like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And leave a comment because it really does help the channel out a bunch. All right. I will see you on the next one, guys. I'm Jory Goodman, the time teller. And I always remember, I didn't invent time. I just tell it. And see, I'm actually not wearing a Rolex right now. I'm wearing my uh, beautiful DW5600 with that olive drab, baby. Try stealing that one. Not these hands.